everybody! So today I'm going to be showing you how I made this pen pouch for my fountain pens. I recently got a lot more, so I needed to expand my storage. <laughs> Thankfully, I was able to salvage this wool from an old dilapidated cabin. So I will be making this pen pouch out of this wool. This pen pouch here, I had to do two layers because it was pretty thin wool, but here it's much thicker wool, so I'm only gonna have to do one layer. So there's a couple of pieces you're going to need. The first piece you need to cut is the body of the pen pouch itself. The second piece is the band that's gonna hold the flap down. And those should be all the pieces you need. So now that all of the felt is actually cut out, it's time for me to decide what shape I want the flap to be. Now, sometimes this kind of stuff is the hardest part of my design process. I'm not limited to any particular design. All I need is for the flap to be pointed. And since I have so much pink fabric, I can make it any way I want. With my gray and orange pouch, I was limited by the amount of fabric I had. So to help me make that decision, I'm gonna do some doodling. So these are the designs I came up with. Pretty simple. I think I'm gonna opt for the pointy bottom with a flower um, like stitched into it. So I'm gonna have to get some embroidery floss out of my house because I'm in the craft shack right now. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go with a flower design on the pink because it's kind of feminine and I wanted to spice it up in a different way. So let's do that. And wouldn't you know it, the design goes out the window. <laughs> Oh, this happens to me all the time, but I really like how this turned out, so I'm quite happy that that happened. Getting dark in the shed today, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. So as you can see, I got a little overzealous on the couch, and I ended up stitching up this whole thing, except for the last step, which I can show you, is I want to put a line of stitches in between these two little pouches so I can have two pens in each of these sides. Because as it is, without the pens in here, let me show you that, it's still a little bit floppy, so I'd like for it to have more structure, and I think doing one line of stitching down the center will allow for me to have more structure in there so my pens will be safer. So I'm just using normal old DMC floss. Thankfully, I've collected it over the years from thrift stores, so I have pretty much every color. And this color is the closest match I could find. So what I'm going to be showing you is exactly how I stitched the sides up. Just a basic running stitch. So I tie a knot in the bottom to begin with. And then I start, since I'm doing it on the inside, I have to go in through the inside to hide the knot. There we go. So that knot has anchored us in the very bottom there. And now it's just your basic running stitch. So I'll speed this up for you. So now for this portion, I'm just going to stitch underneath this band. So just have to maneuver it carefully. Anchor at the top here, I'm gonna do a row of three stitches just to double reinforce it there. Cause I know that this top section is likely to stretch a little bit cause that's where the pens are hooking on on the very top there. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of reinforcing there. And that's the same thing that I did on each of these corners as well. So 
we that's looking good so now to end this off i'm going to go through just a single layer here the back layer and come out right there so then i can tie a knot and just poke it down so that the knot's out of the way The amazing thing about working with felt is that it's so easy to manipulate and it doesn't fray. It's just so amazing. It's such a versatile uh, material to work with. I just, I love it so much. So there we go. Now he's all tucked away. And there's our final pen case. I love how this turned out so much. <laughs> um, I do know that this will be for the pens that I do not use, or I'm not in the process of using, because I'll have a couple inked up at a single time. But, um, oh, and another thing about doing embroidery on wool is that you can hide all of the backs of your threads in between the wool itself. There's a couple little spots where little pieces of uh, thread poked through, but overall, you can hardly see any of that. It's so well hidden. So let's fill this up with my pens. I'm already liking that I put that row of stitches there. It's a lot sturdier now. Oh, that's perfect. And it keeps them nice and uh, solid and in place, having that row of stitching. So let's talk about the magic that is present in this beautiful little pen case. So I started off using wool that was from a dilapidated cabin that had been in my family for generations. So I have that kind of ancestral uh, environmental stewardship energy to it. Since this was a moldy old blanket that I repurposed and turned into a beautiful work of art. With that, I'm also storing vintage pens in here, right? So then I'll be able to add to that magic by having like vintage blanket, vintage uh, DMC floss, vintage pens. So it's just kind of like, to me anyway, this has a environmental stewardship energy to it and uh, a very conscious recreation energy to it. And that's an energy I like to put into a lot of my witchcrafts. But anyway, there's the pen case all together. I hope you guys got inspired to make your own pen cases as well. I've been admiring the Galen leather uh, pen cases, but until I decide to take that plunge and buy like a 20 pen case, <laughs> this one and this one will hold me over in the meantime. Thank you so much for watching you guys, and I hope you enjoyed.